my comparison video now if you're wondering why I make this comparison video um, there are these two cameras that are, you just saw the comparison the Fujifilm X-H1 at 4k 24p DCI compare versus the Canon EOS M at 3k which is in they're both totally different cameras one has IBIS 4k and the other one doesn't doesn't have ibis doesn't have 4k it does shoot in 3k and i maxed out the resolution by lowering my frames per second to 23 frames per second that way i could get like 8 10 12 second clips and that way they could be a you know long enough to compare visually the differences between 3k and 4k uh, the crop factor is totally different the prime lenses even though similar they're quite different especially when you put into fact the crop factor that the USM does have shooting at a 2.39 by 1 aspect ratio which is totally different from the 17 by 9 that the Fujifilm shoots in uh, they're both cinematic look very pleasing in a large screen um, but with the aspect ratio and the crop factor this 22 f2 lens becomes a totally different thing with the fujifilm i did shoot with the 23 mm f2 lens now these two lenses even though on spec they're very similar 22 mm f2 23 mm f2 
they actually look quite different the 22 mil is a pancake style lens and this is just a regular small compact but very well built prime lens and this lens is just amazing it's not even a fair fight because to tell you the truth i don't know if you guys knew this the 23 mil f2 wr lens if you guys didn't know this lens is actually one of the compatible lenses with the newer fujifilm xh2 it's a 40 megapixel camera and that is just insane for an aps-c and how they were able to do that but they only have a, few, a handful of lenses that they say can take advantage of those 40 megapixels this is one of them the canon eos m 22 mil is no slouch this thing is amazing i love it uh, the only sad thing is when i do shoot with the eos m handheld it's really shaky I'm, if I did stabilize some of the footage in DaVinci, I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. We'll see how stable or how shaky the footage is. If it is too shaky, adding stabilization in post is going to even crop some more. And that's why it's you know hard to shoot with this lens because it doesn't have any stabilization on the body. Neither does the lens. So when I shoot with the 15 to 45 kit lens, it does have stabilization and that helps a lot but it's just i really gotta have that bouquet so i shoot wide open both of these lenses were just shot wide open so in that case what are we comparing here if we're not going to be comparing camera bodies and lenses well actually i'm trying to do a more in-depth comparison what i'm trying to compare is the sharpness between the 4k and 3k also the color reproduction how does DNG raw so how well do they color how well do they grade as opposed to the f-log footage that i shot in 8-bit with the xh1 they're totally different bit rate they're totally different codec everything is just so different but how does that translate on the screen what you saw right now and well guys that's pretty much it for this video um i don't really have any conclusions because i haven't seen the footage yet so i have to get home grade everything and see how everything looks but i would love to know from you your perspective or are you watching this on a smartphone on a tv screen a laptop computer what are you watching this on will affect greatly which footage looks better than the other or if there's any difference at all so i would love to know your comments guys so let me know in the comment section down below and if you do have any questions on the uh, either of these cameras i would love to get back to you guys and answer them as soon as i can thank you guys so much for watching see you guys on the next one peace